All right, guys, prepare for one of the shorter lessons that we're going to have. We're going to talk about lethal doses of chemicals and something called a dose response curve. So let's look at some of the background. Uh, how do we measure how toxic compounds are? We've been talking about pollutants for the past couple of units, and we've been talking about their effects on the health of humans. Um, but toxins can have impacts on different organs. You could have, say, one that harms kidney function, another might disrupt the nervous system, and so it's hard to compare the effects of these various toxins. To do so, um, researchers discuss the ability of various chemicals to cause death, and I know that sounds very morbid, but we're going to talk about that in a little more detail on the next couple of slides. So researchers use a measurement called the LD50, or median lethal dose. It's also called lethal dose 50. And what it is, is it's the dose of a chemical, or the amount of a chemical, that is lethal to about 50% of the population of a particular species after a particular amount of time. A lot of times these LD50s are tested with animals, so there's some controversy over using animals in research that's designed to kill them. A lot of times it's mice or rats that are used for this testing, and then they'll use those um, calculations to try and calculate uh, approximately what the LD50 would be for humans. Uh, another problem with the LD50 is it measures acute or short-term exposure to chemicals, not the chronic or long-term exposure. And a lot of times some of these chemicals have impacts that build up over time. So long-term exposure ha may have a different lethal dose. You may have to have a specific amount, smaller amounts of the chemical that you're exposed to over a longer period of time. So uh, people have discovered the LD50 for a lot of different compounds. Um, it's usually in measured in milligrams per kilogram of body mass, um, and it's used as a general indicator of how toxic that substance is. So water actually does have an LD50. You can consume too much water. Uh, it just shows that you can have too much of anything. You have to have everything in moderation. So for an average person uh, who's got a body weight of about 75 kilograms, six liters of water at a time would be a, a lethal amount to drink. Uh, for caffeine, it's about 118 coffees would be too uh, much to drink. And for alcohol, it's about 13 shots of alcohol, um, which uh, you've got the details there. But it just uh, shows you these various compounds that people tend to consume on a regular basis can actually be lethal in large enough amounts. Um, so the lower the number for your LD50, the higher the toxicity of the chemical. So notice le water, it takes a lot of water uh, to be lethal as a dosage, but it takes a lot less alcohol, for instance, to be a lethal dose because alcohol is more toxic to the body. So a lower LD50 means the compound is more toxic and you need to make sure that people are exposed to lower amounts of it. Um, this LD50 is kind of a generalization. Notice it will be lethal to about 50% of the population. So let's say you have a group of 100 mice that you expose to certain amounts of toxins. If 50 of those mice die, then that would be that concentration that you administered that toxin at would be the LD50. Um, some organisms may be killed by a lower dose if they're particularly sensitive to that toxin. Others may require a far larger dose in order to be affected. Um, and like I said, this is usually tested uh, in animals and then they extrapolate or they estimate what the LD50 would be for a human. Uh, there's another closely related measurement called the LC50, and that's the lethal concentration. This is very similar uh, in that it would be lethal to about 50% of your test population, but this is more related to the uh, concentration of chemicals in water or in air. Uh, and as we've been talking about air and water pollution for the past, you know, two units, that would be a uh, very... Um, important measurement for determining how pollutants would affect or uh, humans and other organisms. So what you can do is you can give 
uh, animals or other organisms varying doses of a chemical and you can measure kind of what their response is whether that response is death or some sort of sickness and when you graph that that creates something called a dose response curve uh, and you can use this to figure out kind of the, the LD50 if you're looking at mortality you can use this to make some um, observation about the toxicity of a chemical as well um, and a lot of times these dose response curves are used to determine what's considered a safe concentration. So you'll find that uh, if you look at environmental regulations, there are, um, you know, you might not completely ban a toxic substance, but you might say it has to be in low enough concentrations that it's considered, quote, safe for people to be around. Or what's the minimum hazardous level or dosage for not only pollutants and other substances, but also pharmaceutical drugs, um, they'll also have dose response curves for those as well. On the x-axis, that's where you'll typically have the dose, and a lot of times it's going to be on a logarithmic scale, meaning that instead of having something like, oh, this is going to be 10 and 20 and 30 and 40, where you're adding the same number to each scale unit instead, you are multiplying by 10 each time. So notice here you have a logarithmic scale where it's 10, then 10 times 10, which is 100, then 10 times that, which is 1,000, then 10 times that, which is 10,000. This lets you look at a very wide range of doses on a same graph. The y-axis shows your response or the percentage of the subjects that show that response, or if you're looking at like trying to find an LD50, it would be the, the percent mortality. You have a measurement called the threshold dose, and that is the first dose at which you see some toxicity. Uh, notice it's different for the two chemicals that are graphed on this dose response curve. So for example, chemical B on here has a lower threshold dose, uh, meaning you take a smaller dose and it will have start having a toxic effect. Meanwhile, chemical A has a higher threshold dose like closer to something like 10. Um, and then the curve is often S-shaped, so you'll have this area, um, kind of like what you see here, where the toxicity rises very rapidly or the effect rises very rapidly. And so the greater the slope you see, especially in that, that exponential growth area, the greater the potency of the chemical, the greater the toxicity of the chemical. So being able to read one of these graphs and make conclu draw conclusions about how toxic a chemical is, or try and figure out what the LD50 is, is, is gonna be important. So let's say that this response, and I'm gonna do this in a slightly different color, um, actually, I'm going to erase all the ink and let's do this in, let's do this in purple. So if I'm looking at this, if this was mortality, basically what percentage of the subjects died, and I was looking at 50%, if I was drawing an imaginary line across, or drawing an axis line, this point where that dose response curve intersects this 50% line, that would be your LD50. So for example, here it would be, I would say that's maybe like 20 or 30. So 30 milligrams per kilogram would be the LD50 for chemical A. And for chemical B, it would be, let's say that's about maybe like uh, 550 or 600 milligrams per kilogram. So a much smaller dose of chemical A is going to be more toxic because the LD50 is lower, whereas uh, people or organisms can be exposed to a higher concentration of chemical B without necessarily seeing as toxic effects because the LD50 of that is higher. We'll do some practice with this in class and hopefully if it's not making sense already, it'll start to make sense then. And hopefully this doesn't happen, but since there was a lot of talk of mortality and death of organisms, I figured a ghostly image would be appropriate.